everybody. Sorry we are a little late. Today. About 10 minutes late, but um, we're here. Challenges of being a working pastor. Work has to be sorted out. Yeah, so I'll just give a few minutes um, for us to log on. For those that are on standby, hallelujah. God, we just exalt you, God, because you're so good. You're so good. We exalt you, Lord, also for who you are, because you're a good God. Today, Lord, I'm reminded that you're a good father. And out of you being a good father, I'm loved by you. We are loved by you, Lord, and that's just who we are. And that nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you. We bow before you because that's a very natural thing to do because of who we are. We are the apple of your ever-loving eye. You are our Father. That's a connection like no other. That the God of the universe is our Father. To the God that made us, called us Father. Holy Father. Thank you for the joy that it is to know you, God. Thank you for the joy of fellowship with you. Thank you for the privilege of being able to run to you. The word of God says, your word, O oh God, says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. Another version says they are saved. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your name. Though when things are thick, when things are terrible, when it looks like it's over, Lord, we're reminded it's not over until you say so. Lord, today as um, I minister, Lord, on this issue of overcoming depression, I thank you for the victory that you've given me. I thank you for the victory that you've given many others, and it's my prayer. The Lord, as your word goes out, I'm standing on Isaiah 61 because God, you've given me authority. O oh God, to declare that the prisoners and the captives are all free in the name of Jesus. So Lord, I take my position as a servant of the Lord, as an apostle of Jesus Christ. And right now I speak to that spirit of heaviness and those demons of depression. And I command you right now in the name of Jesus, that as the word of God goes out, you are bound, you are defeated. You shall not have any authority or any power in the children of God. They will lift up the name of God. There will be everything that they were meant to be because of who God is to us in the name of Jesus. You will no longer exalt yourself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pull you down. We cast down every imagination in the name of Jesus Christ and bring it to submission to our Lord Jesus Christ. We also take authority over generational curses and generational holds that have been able to get person upon person over and over. You move from generation to generation how dare you? In the name of Jesus, we break. Spirit, and in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and I declare that right now the gates of depression that have been holding people are letting go in the name of Jesus. I command you, open now in the name of Jesus. And right now I call out the children of God and I say you are free. In Jesus mighty name amen hallelujah so um, since I think I, I did mention um, before that um, I can't tell sorry guys I can't tell who's there I can't tell who's there and who's out there because I can only see the numbers but um, I said some time back that um, I'll be ministering on this word on uh, overcoming depression and then I went a little bit quiet because um, I needed to just seek the Lord about the angle and about exactly what he wanted me to say but uh, the other thing that happened is that I forgot to transfer my call. So, thank you. You're still there. So, um, as I said this week that um, I was going to minister on this topic, um, you know, I can never quite get used to this. But what happened is that, what happened, of course, I was accosted by the demons of depression. Hi, Shiro. Good to see you. Yeah, I was accosted by the demons of depression and naturally what they do is that they try and come to stop you. Yeah, Julie Favored, Karibu Sana, good to see you. Nice praying with you yesterday. I hope you're doing well today. Amen. So, um, basically, um, you know, what, what happened is that the last two, three days I began to feel low, just suddenly low and discouraged and disheartened and everything. 
And, you know, it's interesting, as a deliverance pastor, that's something that happens. You, If you're going to be going to pray with somebody who is going through discouragement, one of the things that happens, and by the way, this is a release of a word for somebody, is that you begin to feel very heavily discouraged before you get there. It's one of the things that the spiritual realm does. Eh? Then, you know, if you're going to go and pray with somebody who's suicidal, you suddenly begin thinking about ending your life. If you're going to pray with somebody who's hopeless, you begin to feel hopeless, you begin to feel nothing's working, but it's based on who you're going to minister to. And sometimes you don't even know that that's a spirit in that person but very often when you commit to go and pray with somebody when you begin to feel something it's not from you what actually happens is that the Lord begins to allow you to feel the burden of that person you just need to be aware that that is what you're dealing with and a simple prayer that you pray is you say I see you spirit of this and that and the other I refuse to agree with you I send you back where you've come from or if you don't want to send it back in case it's coming from somebody it's better to just say I command you into the bottom let's speak now in the name of Jesus Christ but basically you say I see you I refuse to agree with you I send you back so um, depression what is depression depression is basically it's it's a it's a biblically I'm not gonna go scientific because I'm not a scientist I'm a minister of the gospel so according to the gospel it's called a spirit of heaviness a spirit of heaviness. Why is it called a spirit of heaviness? Because when it comes upon you, you begin to feel heavy hearted. You begin to feel blue. But also the thing that depression does is that it, it, it actually sits on you and squeezes you down so that you're down all the way to the floor and if you can go lower it pushes you lower and lower and lower and if you haven't gone through depression you might not be able to understand it i hear people saying oh that's just a weakness it's a problem or it's a metabolism or whatever let me take you back some years ago um i i actually let me start with my own story i like giving my testimony because um you know when we say that we overcome um satan also with the sword of the spirit as one of the the weapons that we've been given actually the reason why we overcome satan with the sword of the spirit is not just the word of god it is also the word of our testimony what to declare God has done because it's also in line with scripture that God is able to save. God is able to deliver. God is able to raise us up. So we testify and say he's done it for me. So when I was about nine years old, let me say about seven or eight years old, I had uh, my older brothers, sisters and cousins talking about boarding school. So I think, oh, boarding school is amazing. Boarding school is so awesome. You shower with really nice, oh, the showers, oh my goodness. They wouldn't quantify all the showers, but like, oh my goodness. And what they were doing, they were being cynical, but I was too young to know that they were being cynical. So what did I begin to do? I began to push my mom, I wanna go to boarding school, I wanna go to boarding school, everyone's going to boarding school, I wanna go to boarding school. And I'd actually forgotten this until my mom reminded me the other day when I asked her, why did you send me to boarding school? So mom discovered a boarding school very far from Nairobi where we were living, and she sent she sent me there I was about six six uh, no nine years old and uh, it was really crazy I mean when I got there I had all this long flowing hair and my first shocker was that you know I was t called by all these girls come 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 I take you somewhere and then we went and I was taken to the matron and apparently she was in the shearing uh, house basically you know shaving people and so i remember sitting there and she had this comb and she was cutting everybody's hair and i didn't think that's what was going to happen to me and they told me just wait just wait just wait it's okay i tell you people can be yeah little little to nasty girls they're just looking at and looking out for who needs to be shaved so i was taken in and after some time i was shaved i didn't really think about it until after my hair was gone i was like wait a minute wait a minute my hair my hair but then like big deal but i think right from that point i began to get very very sad and discouraged then you know it didn't feel too bad to be away from home but after like two three days i'm like i'm missing my mommy i'm missing my daddy i'm missing my siblings and i couldn't call them I didn't know when I was going to see them and then days kept coming, days kept going and I remember walking through that school and feeling very sad, especially in the evenings, just feeling so sad that a day is over, I've not seen my parents and I think that's what opened the door for me in terms of depression and discouragement and what would happen is that I would just have this low thing, I would just feel so sad, I'd feel like the world is ending and as I got into my teens, it would get worse, you know, I would go to bed saying, Lord, I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning and I was by that time in a day school living with my parents but depression is a spirit that given the door 
given a little inch, it actually comes and takes everything. So I would, um, you know, find myself, especially during the holidays, I'd feel discouraged, I'd feel depressed, I'd feel, you know, I just feel low, you know, especially in the morning. And um, at night, I'd go to bed and I'd be praying. I hope I don't wake up in the morning. I hope I die in my sleep. Then I'd wake up in the morning and I'm still here. And I'm like, man, I can't believe I'm still here. What am I still doing here? And it became a continuous thing. And nobody really knew what was going on. Then, of course, I moved from there to starting to think, okay, fine. Looks like God's not going to take me. Maybe I'm not good enough for God to take me. So, hmm, how do I take away my life? So, I would stand there was no Google then. So, I tried to figure out how do I take away my life? How do I take away my life? Then, I would, I, I would tell my mom and she would think that I'm joking. So, she would give me options and tell me, oh, yeah, you do it this way, you do it this way, you do it this way. But in the house, as I began to look, I began to realize, wait a minute. This is something that seems to be in the family of people saying they're feeling low and you know, I'd go to the sitting room and find my mom holding herself like this. I'd ask her what is it? She says, I'm just feeling low. I'm just feeling low. Then I got born again when I was 16 years old. But still, even then, it didn't totally lift, though I felt joy for the first time in my life. And, you know, then I began to say, oh, when I get married, when I get a job, when I get a car, when I get a child. But it just wouldn't lift. It would reduce, but it just wouldn't lift. It would just be that thing of, I shouldn't be here. I don't want to be here, especially in the morning. And um, eventually, I think I, the Lord led me to do a 40-day fast. Actually, not a very long time ago. It was, um, I mean, I had, my, I had all my four children by that time. And I wasn't praying about feeling discouraged. What I was praying for was ministry. God has called me to ministry and I was saying, how do I minister? Because, you know, I'd learned how to just counter discouragement and depression. I'd learned how to counter it. But it was always a consistent battle. So finally, I'm doing this 40-day fast. On, on day 29, I remember it was. I saw said, wait a minute. I've not felt depressed for some days. Then I tried to think about when it stopped, and I can't even tell you. But finally, I realized God had actually delivered me. And uh, this is actually the first time that I'm teaching on depression and how to overcome depression. So how, what, what is depression? So it's a spirit of heaviness. And what does the word of God say very directly? God says two things. Number one, through King David, the Lord says, magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord. When you're depressed, what happens is that you magnify a situation or you magnify your feelings. So what you do is you must magnify the Lord so that God is greater. Because he already is. But also the other thing that I've seen is a promise in Isaiah 61 verse uh, 3 that God has given us a garment of praise in the place of the spirit of heaviness. So praising God is very powerful. Actually, it's one of the most powerful ways. And what happens? Um, depression has to be met with hope because depression is hopelessness. It's hopelessness. It's looking around and you're not seeing anything. You're seeing desolation. You're seeing there's nothing. Nothing's going to grow. Nothing can happen. God can never use me. I'm useless. I'll never make it. I'd also grown up with a lot of, we'd had generations of abuse, verbal abuse, that is, of being told negative things. You'll never make it. You'll never become anything. You'll never turn into anything. And you know, you just need to hear those things a few times. Then you begin to confess it as well. Begin to say, oh, I'll never amount to anything. And the moment that a teacher gives you, you know, um, uh, uh, an example, sheet that said that you got 24 percent you know that was me mathematics i just couldn't get it until after i got born again that's when the lord began to do better for me and by the way in form four i finally got a c minus in mathematics there was a whole celebration in my house because that was the best grade that had been seen in a while in terms of mathematics but god turns things around the other thing is hope is, is defined in terms of the armor of God. In Ephesians 6, we're told about the full armor of God. Check from verse 10. It talks about the full armor of God, putting on the full armor of God, because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So depression is not weakness. Depression is not what we call mental illness. It can't de degenerate to that because of torture. Because what happens is that you're tormented. You're actually tormented by demons, by the way. And you're constantly hearing voices that tell you you're useless, you'll never make it, you'll never amount to anything anything and you're actually tortured to the place of death but the other thing I've come to learn is that a lot of people who struggle with depression also have a gift of the prophetic and a lot of times when they allow themselves to be set free they are able to really help a lot of people and so what the enemy does is because he cannot reach them himself he cannot destroy them because of whatever has surrounded them when they are born again 
then what he does is begins to use that weakness that old thing and you know the old story that was used against them and tries to convince them to take away their life but mercy says no every time and i bless the lord a few people have lost the battle unfortunately and i find that the battle is lost when we glorify the sickness you know things like saying oh you know this person has bipolar oh you know i normally have depression and it's glorified and it's lifted up instead of the name of god we must learn to counter depression by magnifying the name of god because when we glorify god whatever you magnify gets bigger that's a fact of life whatever you magnify gets bigger so when you make it about jesus and not about us then you begin to live for another purpose and the goodness of living for um the lord jesus is that he whatever you, you if you give your life to him he'll always give it back to you better and polished and everything so learn also to praise by the way i don't walk around without praise music without worship and you know at some point I'll be told that I cannot sing, but you know, the word of God doesn't say sing, really. It says sing to the Lord, yes, but there's a scripture that I love that says, make a joyful noise. So for me, I will make that joyful noise to the Lord, and I find that it brings joy as I begin to praise the Lord, as I begin to lift up the name of God. And you know, the other thing about depression is that you can feel it coming, but then you just begin to feel sad, you just begin to feel blue, you, you just begin to feel oh, hopeless, you begin to think about the negative things and nothing positive, you feel like nothing's working out, nothing's going on. So one of the ways to do it is to do what? Count your blessings, name them one by one, just count them. By the way, one of the things God taught me to do is to thank him for the air I breathe. I can be walking. I'm like, mm. God, there are people in hospital right now who are paying for oxygen by the tank. And it's really expensive. There's a time I knew how much it was. I've forgotten. But Lord, up to this time in my life, I would have paid billions of shillings for the oxygen, but you've given me free oxygen. And what happens? You begin to smile. God loves me. Yes, he does. He gives me oxygen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it lifts. Because the thing is, you know, the word of God says, Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil. He will flee. So as you're focusing on God and his goodness and his wonder and how amazing he is, you move everything from the negative. You move everything from the things you're looking at that are not working. And you begin to magnify God. And by the way, in that whole process, the enemy just runs. He flees from you. Um, well, you know, I can't compare what I went through with someone maybe who's gone to the place where it's clinical, where they end up losing their mind and hallucinating and everything. So what do you do with somebody like that who has gotten to the place where, you know, maybe they've gone all the way to Mathare. By the way, some time back, I went to Mathare and I was shocked by the demons that are in that place. I remember one guy looking at me and I'll never forget this. And, you know, they were surrounded by these um a wire mesh kind of thing and the guy started shouting and saying you know what you know what the the one demon that i had i used to be saved and then i backslid and the one demon that i had went and found seven others and came back and i was shocked that somebody would be saying this and i realized these are just demons and at that time i was very young i didn't really understand deliverance and everything i trust the lord that i'll get a chance to go back there again mm, in the lord's time so overcome with praise that's one also the word of god get a bible app that has audio and when you wake up in the morning just turn on the word of god you may not have the strength to open the bible for yourself but just turn on the word of god if you can get a phone that just automatically turns on the word of god turn on the word of god um people who get depression also are extremely sensitive so be careful who you spend time around stay away from toxic people who make you feel bad about yourself who make you feel like you're not gonna make it and find people who love the lord who speak of the lord who testify of the lord and surround yourself with such people just call them and say hey hi i just missed you and really the truth be told is you just need to hear from from the lord um you wake up a lamb make you wake up a lamb a praise song a praise song that glorifies the lord that talks of god's goodness that you know um it just says that god loves us and all that so surround yourself with the word of god with with praise and everything that is godly 
and then if you can, you're allowed in the office to work with praise music and worship trust the lord to show you people who worship very well i love somebody like kim walker william mcdowell guys who um uh, who worship so deeply tasha cobbs i love tasha cobbs these days you know just find people who are glorifying the lord ruben kigame in kenya you know there's ezekiah israel you know just sarah sarah k they've got worship music that just gets you just getting out of your little zone where you're thinking about yourself and thinking about things and you lift up the name of God there's this song called Nina Sababu I love that song you know I'll play it in the car and everything I have um, you know get vernacular songs that also glorify the Lord and get you dancing and thanking God and as you do it somehow positivity will come somehow you will overcome and what you do is just overcome one by one don't try to overcome a lot don't try to think about tomorrow don't try to think about the next day even the Bible tells us that we should not worry about tomorrow take tomorrow will take care of itself yeah each day has its own issues so just deal moment by moment time by time um i i i met a girl um you know some actually quite a number of years ago and um, I met her formally, so, um, but one thing when I meet people, I always ask the Lord, you know, just reveal to me stuff. But this one, I didn't even remember to say that prayer. But all I kept seeing around her were demons and all these things. So later on, you know, I, I just turned to her and asked her, tell me a little bit about yourself, just informally bought her lunch. And I got to learn that, uh, you know, she had a serious condition, you know, that is called the bipolar condition. And I told her, you know, I don't know what you believe in. She was born again, but still, you know, caught up in several things. And we visited her home at some point uh, because, you know, I kept avoiding it, but I kept getting, um, you know, messages of you need to help so and so. I know you can help so and so. You need to help so and so. You need to help so and so. And one morning I was at a funeral service um, uh, for uh, my husband's uncle and I got a message saying she attempted to kill herself. And I stepped out and I called and she said, I'm so angry. I can't believe I didn't die. I tried and this is what I did this time. And I'm so angry. I'm so angry. And, you know, I said, you know what? We're going to fast. We're going to pray. So I called a few people in and that was the first time I actually went in to, to conduct deliverance for depression. And I want to take you through what I saw. First of all, the house had its owners. And I don't mean the occupants. I mean its owners. The Lord just opened our spiritual eyes and I was shocked at what I saw. I remember seeing a demon in a swimming costume walking around and parading itself and saying, can you not see? I remember seeing, you know, there were, there were dolls, there were all these things and it's amazing. We went room by room, place by place and there were so many demons speaking. Um, and at some point, I remember being given a message for a senior relative in the home and saying, hey, this depression thing, it started from you, right? The guy says, oh yeah, I've been born again for some time now, but yes, I struggle with depression and sometimes I still struggle with it. And the thing with depression is if you're going to deal with it, actually the demons pretty much, is you need to go to the root. And the Lord showed me this person had the root. And the Lord gave me a vision of this person being drowned, um, you know, and God is so amazing. You know, Daniel said, there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And suddenly I see this vision of this guy and some people trying to drown him um, on Lake Victoria. And I say, I'm seeing a vision of you. You're little and there are all these people surrounding you and they're trying to drown you on Lake Victoria. Was there such a thing? The guy broke down and began to cry. And we realized that that was the root of the depression. People had tried to kill him. And the thing is that people need to know is depression is a demon. And the way demons work, it's not your fault if you have it. If you're carrying it, it's not your fault. And the devil wants you to think it's your fault. Normally it's introduced by someone else. And by the way, if you haven't come for the social session, you need to come for the sozo session because these are the things that we are teaching in sozo sessions what that we do is we just go into the presence of the holy spirit and the lord god and he just takes us back to the root so i saw this vision it was something in the past and we went through and what 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 the guy had to do was just to forgive so he said i forgive my brothers and my sisters i forgive my uncles and my cousins who tried to drown me they thought it was a game but in this process i felt people wanted to kill me because i'm useless and i'll never make it and instantly this girl was set free but not so much for the child because unfortunately the child was set free for about a year to two years but unfortunately she regressed she went back because the thing with depression it also comes with other habits and by the way here's the thing and i feel this is a message for somebody 
if you're dealing with an alcoholic, if you're dealing with a philanderous person, if you're dealing with someone on drugs, very often the problem is not the alcohol, the problem is not the drugs, the problem is not the women or the men, the problem is normally the root that is depression. And the way they do it is to make themselves feel better, they go and sleep around. To make themselves feel better, they drink alcohol. To make themselves feel better, they take drugs. Because, by the way, depression is, how do I explain it? It's like something catching your mind. Imagine, a, is it called a clench or what is it called? These things for woodworks. And it's like this, and what it does is it begins to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and it's squeezing the life out of you, but you're not dying. And everything in you says, die, 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 but you're not dying. Die, 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 you're not dying. It's reminding you of all your mistakes. It's lining up things that were never even your mistakes and giving them to you, telling you all the bad things and all the terrible things. And that's why I call it a demon of torment. And also the Bible calls it heaviness. And it just pushes you down and squeezes you down and squeezes you down. There's a song that I love to sing that I was supposed, I, I, the devil had squeezed me and squeezed me to the ground like a chewing gum. And God came and he struck me from the ground. And then he began to lift me up. So I, I thank the Lord for that because it's one of the things I celebrate in the Lord and bless the Lord for. That I know I have been squeezed to the ground like chewing gum. And I love, by the way, one of the things I do is I love, I love to see the devil lose. I will enter into whatever number of days of fasting and prayer that the Lord needs me to do. I will preach and a lot of people don't understand why I preach the way I do. I will do whatever it takes in the presence of God to magnify my God for what he's done for me, for what I've seen him do for others and knowing that he can do for others. But there is also a side of me that knows the enemy, that knows the devil, that the Lord took me out on the other side and I came out victorious and I live daily to ensure that the kingdom of, of the devil is complete completely destroyed, annihilated, finished, kaput, completely. And I don't shut up because I daily, I just want to walk into the devil's kingdom and just speak right now, setting people free in the name of Jesus. And uh, the Lord has given me the opportunity to make that my ministry. And I bless the Lord. And that's why I don't shut up. Because I know what it is for the enemy to come against you and for you to have no help, for you to, you know, go to a church where you don't even know what to do, you don't know what to say. For me, you know, one of the things that the devil did was that anyone who tried to tell me about salvation, I'll tell them I was born a Catholic, I'll die a Catholic. Shut up, leave me alone. I am a Catholic. And I thought, oh, being a Catholic, Roman Catholic was the thing, epitome. And yet I was never free. But Jesus is so faithful. He came for me. In my room, he came for me. I was sad, I was discouraged, I was depressed, I was crying and weeping on my bed and I said how long will I cry out Lord and you don't hear me how long do I cry out to you I've prayed rosaries I keep going for mass I never miss anything Lord I've memorized the mysteries I've done everything that is required and yet God I'm never free why aren't you coming through as I call you and I heard a voice say you are such a sinner instead of repenting you're blaming God kneel down and pray and that's how God began to get me out of darkness and into his marvelous light and so I preach the gospel because I know the gospel is freedom I preach the gospel because I know Jesus sets people free I preach the gospel because I know no other way after struggling many years with depression discouragement by the way, at age nine the same depression thing that was coming it also came through um, a condition where if I took tea I would begin to just have no oxygen and I would collapse and people thought it was funny but it wasn't funny I would just collapse and I can't breathe and the Lord healed me by the way when I was a pastor this woman would come and serve us tea she would get tea all the way from Eldoret and tell me pastor I brought you tea she forget every Sunday that I don't take tea then one day I said wait a minute I'm always preaching the gospel and saying about how God heals I said bring that tea and I held it and I said what is this uncircumcised religion that dares to defy itself against the armies of God I'm drinking this tea today lord and if i collapse in this church it is your name that will be embarrassed because you are a healer and i took tea and from that day i can take tea and there's no issue the other condition and by the way all that was being offered was pretty much tea so i would go hungry by the way let me tell you the condition oh my oh my oh my the holy spirit is just ministering to me so we moved from tea so i can't do breakfast so i began to have this thing where i'm not having breakfast that's not a good thing then the other thing that the enemy did is that i got ulcers at age nine i had ulcers so i couldn't eat a lot of the things in the body school so I began to get myself into this place where I'll drink milk but pretty much I'll just avoid food and the ulcers would just 
you know go bubbling and everything and i'll get really really sick and then of course when you're sick and you're in pain and people don't even believe you they say that you're trying just trying to get attention what happens depression discouragement and you get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger so i also got a condition where I would not remember to eat. I just wouldn't eat. I would see food and associate it with pain. So by the time I was in high school, I wouldn't eat. I would have dinner. And then by the time I got to campus, I would save money to avoid eating. So I'd go days without eating. Then suddenly I think, oh, I haven't, I'm feeling dizzy. Then I'm like, oh, maybe it's because I've not eaten. So when was the last time I ate? I'm like, oh dear, I haven't eaten for two days, for three days. Oh, I can't remember the last time I ate. Then I would go buy a sausage. I would eat it. Maybe take a slice of of bread or fruit and then I'd go off and by the time I was done with campus I was actually about 48 kgs I was really really tiny and then I begin later on oh by the way it also comes with issues to do with you know your self-esteem so I get to high school and uh, my dad is a farmer at that time one of the things he's doing is farming so he'd bring potatoes home and would have a whole sack of white potatoes so we discovered to make chips and then my friend and I from high school would sit down and would fill a whole tub a three liter tub ice cream tub with uh, chips and would sit and just watch movies but then we are born again but we're sitting and just watching movies the whole day of course what happens we grew really really fat so self-image and you know you begin to be given names and labels and you know when the boys are talking to other people and I was in Loretta Songari at the time and you know there are all these cute guys from St. Mary's and your peers have boyfriends and your peers are are, 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 are being you know tuned what is tuned by the way <laughs> being courted it can't be courtship because it wasn't for marriage anyway boys are attracted to them and us guys are fat we're chubby and you know therefore nobody wants us and what does the enemy do more depression 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 increases they're thinking oh i'm not beautiful i don't look nice no one loves me i tell you the devil is a liar he's a liar he's a thief one of the things the lord began to change about was exercise oh yeah exercise works i thank god for the holy spirit exercise really works when you exercise you receive um some hormones which i forget what they're called they're called endorphins i think they're called endorphins and it's a feel-good hormone pretty much the same hormone that comes when you're in love but also when you pray and spend time with god endorphins that's why you walk into a prayer room we like to joke with my friends that you walk into a prayer room like a little pussycat you know that's been rained on and then you walk out of the prayer room like a lion bring it bring it bring it what are you gonna bring there's nothing satan i'm full i'm free i know who i am hallelujah glory to god prayer the power of prayer when the lord comes upon us so exercise is actually a very very good way to overcome depression uh alcohol is a terrible way to deal with depression because alcohol actually makes you feel low as opposed to i guess drugs that make you feel high but even when they make you feel high later on you come down and it feels worse and everything um so enter into an exercise regime know your god for sure by the way you cannot overcome depression without jesus jesus breaks the shackle because it's a demon yeah and then eat eat properly don't eat things that will make you feel bad because some things um cause you to have toxins in your body that make you feel bad then what do you watch protect your eyes be careful little eyes what you see i used to watch horror movies and one of the things i learned is that the animal then come and torture me in my sleep because of watching horror movies so stop watching horror movies stop watching discouraging things stop going for funerals of people you don't even know yeah just because unless the lord has sent you there um careful what kind of music you listen to listen to worship music listen to music that edifies if you're gonna spend time listening to you know near far wherever you are yeah i can't believe that those kind of songs are still in there you know and songs that uh, i've forgotten so many secular songs but songs that talk of how you know love 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 is never love until i don't know what what crap don't watch those don't listen to those kind of things they're not gonna help you they'll just feel, make you feel discouraged they'll just make you feel like you're never gonna make it they're just gonna make you feel you know and then don't court don't court don't date for the sake of dating date only as the lord leads you and date when you're ready for marriage and date somebody who's interested in marriage and it's best to date somebody who you know as a friend you've known as a friend for some time then now it moves from there because your heart is delicate don't just go giving it to everybody but also before you give away your heart make sure that the person has to go through god to come and find you so let the man go and find god then come and find you don't date an unbeliever don't date somebody that you have to rescue don't date somebody who has an alcohol 
people they shouldn't date somebody who is abusive because all that happens in marriage is that whatever habit you've already seen snippets of is magnified in marriage you don't need to have a bad marriage and if somebody's beating you up and you struggle with depression step out god does not hold it against you step out get better let the lord heal you then you can fight for your marriage when you're whole god you know the word of god says if your hand causes you to sin cut it off so the same way the lord by the way has made it very clear to me god hates divorce but if you're in a marriage that affects you to the point where you could lose your faith god would rather you enter heaven single or separated than go to hell because you are trying to save a marriage don't try to be anybody's hero and then of course above all learn to praise god learn to make him the closest friend learn to confide in him be careful because again when you confide in the wrong people they can hurt you they'll use your secrets they'll use your point of weakness to speak against you or whatever it is confide in the lord and if he gives you a prayer partner then love them but always remember to put god between you and anything that you love including your job your children whatever because anything can be taken away anything can happen the enemy can try to strike you so he comes through your children maybe a baby dies god forbid maybe you know you lose your husband or your husband becomes abusive or your children turn against you after you've given them all your life and everything so what you do is pour your everything on god let him be your everything and then get to know him one of the ways to overcome also the enemy and depression in particular write down scriptures walk around with a book with scriptures get sticky notes with all sorts of different colors and write scriptures that speak of who god is and who you are to god stick them in your room or whatever find things that when you look at it it encourages you find a scripture that you can keep speaking you know um depression is a weapon no weapon formed against me will prosper every time that rises up against me in judgment i shall condemn for this is what my heritage as a servant of the lord and my calling is from god but there, a lot of people speak um isaiah 54 uh, 17 without finishing it for this is my heritage as a servant of God heritage heritage this is my heritage as a servant of God and my calling is from God hallelujah and then learn to speak scripture learn to speak by the way I walk and I speak because I've learned that there is power in our words there is power in what we say life and death lies in the power of the tongue I saw somebody a pastor who was taking around something I think a blog or something saying how that scripture has been misused you know what I don't know what you believe I don't know what you know but for me I know life and death lies in the power of the tongue and those who love it eat of its fruits and I've learned that I can speak life God has given me the gift of creation to be able to create according to his will, according to his purpose. And when I speak into a situation of dry bones, I've seen them come to life and I speak. Because the word of God says all authority has been given to us. All authority has been given to us by Christ Jesus. The word of God also tells us in the book of Job that you shall decree a thing and it shall become. And then it adds that God will shed light on it. So long as you're walking in the spirit, you're moving in the spirit, he will move you into utterance according to the will of God. But above all, remember, depression is a demon. And what do you do with demons? You wrestle. You wrestle with them. Remembering you're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Take some time to fast. Fasting is powerful. But the depression is one of those things that the word of God says, Jesus said, some things only go through prayer and fasting. So fast. And seek the Lord's face and say, Lord, I want to be free. Lord, I want to be free. Take me to the root. How did depression enter my life? How did depression enter my family? Take me to the root. Why do we not deal with the leaves? Why do we not deal with the branches? Because if you deal with the leaves or the branches and the root remains, it just continues to grow. And if anything, it loves to be pruned. So don't deal with the superficial. Don't deal with, oh God, you know, right now I come against depression in the name of Jesus and that's it. You can deal with that. That's okay. But ask God to take you to the root. And when you go... rebuke that column yeah, I worship you something is trying to raise itself up so I had to forgive my mom sorry for that disruption I had to forgive my mom but before I could forgive my mom I talked to her I asked her mom why did you send me to boarding school when I was so young and that's when she reminded me I ended up in boarding school and she told me you are the one who asked for it and I couldn't remember and that's how the devil works you can't remember so you're holding on forgiveness I was rejected I was hated and this is what happened and a root of by the way depression goes hand in hand with rejection a demon of rejection 
So I realized, I said, oh, mom, I'm so sorry. I held it against you all these years. I thank God we talked about it. And then, you know, after that, I said, I forgive my mom. And I think, but then what I think, it's actually the same year that the Lord set me free. Remember, according to Matthew 18, um, the word of, I think it's around verse 35, it talks about the unforgiving servant. Matthew 18, the unforgiving servant. Go check it, it's a title. The unforgiving servant. Every time you're bound, there are some things that are there. One is a lie. The devil is a father of lies and he uses lies to cause us to be bound. But Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So in, in deliverance, all we do is that we identify the lie, we revoke the lie, or we, what is it called, call off the lie, and then you speak the truth. That's what deliverance is. You replace it with truth. So the lie you had put was your mom didn't love you enough, your mom chased you away, and your daddy wouldn't visit you, and your siblings don't love you, yada, yada, yada. And so the moment that I realized that that was a lie, and I renounced the lie, I said, that's not true. My siblings loved me, my mommy loved me, my daddy loved me, and they are good people, and they did not throw me away, and they did not reject me. And then I asked the Lord, what's the truth? I said, wait a minute. I'm a true Kenyan. I might not have married my husband if I wasn't thrown into Western Kenya. It took away the tribalism thing. So Lord, you are glorified. I thank you, Lord, because I got very deep in the Catholic faith and I learned how to really pray. And even now, though I'm not a Catholic, the foundations of things like kneeling down and revering the Lord as opposed to taking him for granted, the foundations of pursuing God regardless of what happens, not taking him for granted, they remain. And I bless the Lord for that. And then the other thing is, the Lord caused me to be able to set up a business, um, you know, where I deal with people at a very low level. And a lot of them are from Western Kenya. And I speak Isuha, glory to God, and Maragoli, and a few other languages as a result. The other thing is I can survive anywhere. And I, I, the Lord taught me to be humble because I came from a pretty well-off family. But having been thrown into a place where we had to clean toilets, and there were pit toilets, and we had to eat maize and beans every day, I lived a life that was pretty much a life of hardship and poverty. And in that process, you know, as as uh, Paul says in Philippians that, you know, um, I, 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 what is it, um, Philippians chapter 4, he says, I have learned to live with little or with nothing, and I've also learned what it is to have plenty, and through it all, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So things like money don't really move me, I'll need the money, but you know, so I began to speak all those, the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth, about what God has done, the truth, the truth, the truth. Hallelujah, glory to God. And, 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 and you know, the Lord just set me free. The Lord set me free. And by the way, one of the things people tell me is, you're so happy. I'm like, yeah. And I don't take it for granted. And remember, one of the fruit of the Spirit is what? Joy, 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 joy abounding. And I thank God. And I want to tell you that if God set me free, and he set free so many other people, he can set you free. And he can also use you to set somebody free. Let the atmosphere be filled with the word of God. Let the person be intoxicated with the word of God. Let the person learn to speak the word of God. Let the person learn to praise Jesus and to exalt him and to count their blessings. Because um, the depression cannot thrive in an atmosphere of thanksgiving and in an atmosphere of praise. Also remembering when praises go up, his presence comes down. God's presence comes down. And then, of course, fasting and prayer and surrendering yourself to God. God will give you joy. The Word of God says that He causes our feet to leap like a deer and to jump up and down like a deer. Glory to God. And then, of course, come for the social session. I did attend the social session in the year that I was free. I didn't find my freedom completely at that time. But somewhere, actually, it was in that year that I found my freedom. So that's part of where I'm a social pastor. For those that wonder what social is, by the way, Google it. Yeah, it's actually in the Bible. It's in the Bible. It was used 110 times in the New Testament. So just say the meaning of sozo according to the Bible. And it will just pop up. Yeah, so come for the session. We, we think that we'll be at uh, All Saints Cathedral. It's the 1st of April. We also, I'm also planning a session in Tennessee um, in uh, June, probably at the beginning of June, just trying to confirm my travel. And then in September, I'll be probably be in Germany. So, but we'll announce it. And then there's an invite in Australia. So we'll announce where we are going. And uh, yes, you need to come for a Sozo session. And the Lord will break those shackles. And also part of what the Sozo session does is that it, it equips you in how to get deliverance by yourself together with God, just you and God. 
it's not about a human being it's not about a person it teaches you the prayers that you pray the things that you say the mentality that you need to have for deliverance to take place god bless you i love you guys so much please share the video um we're having a bit of a challenge with facebook i hope it does go through i'm trusting the lord but either way what i know is that the only way that um it will not go through is if the lord does not want it to go through but if the lord wants it to go through nothing can stop it my prayer is that this message will get out to as many people as possible who are struggling with depression and also who are being you know um laughed at by people or being looked at weirdly by people because they they're struggling with depression it's a demon and it can be overcome it's overcome by the name of jesus christ because his name is powerful and of course the gospel breaks the yokes and remember in exchange for the spirit of heaviness god gives us a garment of praise hallelujah 